Welcome to Quantum Mechanics, a powerful framework for understanding the universe. Hi everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to discuss commutators or commutation relations. So, this is going to be a concept which um, stays with us throughout the rest of this chapter, and in fact the rest of uh, the course. So you're probably familiar that if you have two matrices, A and B, the AB does not equal BA in general. And the same is true for linear operators, for which matrices are special examples. So let's look at two linear operators that um, are familiar and are going and play a big role in this course. So the momentum operator, remember, operators are denoted by uppercase P, and that's h bar over i, d by dx. The position operator is just multiplication of a function. These operators are acting on functions by the position variable. So let's compute Px acting on a function, psi of x, and xp acting on a function, psi of x. And this is a nice little calculation. So px acting on psi of x, p is at the left, so we write down the, the definition for the momentum operator, and then we have x acting on psi of x. Okay, this is the order of things. All right, now this is set up ideally for differentiation using the product rule d by dx of x times psi of x and that's what we carry out in the next line h bar over i goes along for the ride and this is what we get so that is h bar over i psi of x plus and now we make the identification for the operators here operator x operator p psi of x so understanding how you go from here to here is important. Should be easy for you now, I hope. So if you collect the first and the last lines together, what we've shown is that Px equals h bar over i xp. Okay. So, we can now give you the definition of the commutator of two linear operators. So commutator, we denote that by the two operators, A and B, square brackets A comma B. And the order is important because that's equal to AB minus BA. That's a measure of the extent to which A and B do not commute. If it's zero, they commute. So we see from the previous calculation that x and p do not commute, and we have this famous commutation relation xp equals i h bar. Okay, the same idea holds if we go to three dimensions because remember we had the uh, momentum operator and position operators in three dimensions, they were just the obvious generalizations where we uh, generalized component by component. So, this is interesting. This tells me, and this, well, I'm just stating it right now, that um, the different components of momentum, three-dimensional momentum, commute with each other. The different components of position commute with each other. But now, x, i, p, j, they commute if i is different from j. Now this is a nice little exercise to prove this at this stage. And I would like you to do that. And something we will discuss if you have difficulties, we definitely need to discuss. So the commutator satisfies certain properties. And we're actually going to use them pretty heavily. So the first one is obvious. AB equals minus BA. 
commutator of AB <laughs> equals minus the commutator of BA. I said that wrong, obviously. A and B is linear in both A and B. A commutator B is linear in both A and B. Okay. That's, a, that's an interesting, a good exercise to formulate it in a mathematical way that enables you to use a definition of linearity. Now this third identity, we're going to use this over and over again, uh, starting with the harmonic oscillator later on in this chapter. And also this identity comes up, and we'll see it uh, in particular when we look at angular momentum in the last chapter. So I just want to introduce these ideas right now. The concept, as I mentioned, the concept of the commutator comes up quite a bit throughout the rest of the course. So you know what it is, you know what it is in one of the more um, common pairs of operators. Remember it's a concept for pairs of operators because an operator always commutes with itself. And we have some identities that we're going to derive. So until next time, we are um, going to look at the notion of simultaneous measurability and whatever that may mean. The commutator comes up in a very central way there. And then generalized uncertainty or the uncertainty after that. And finally, the um, harmonic oscillator is going to finish out this chapter. So, see you next time. Bye.